Okay, we've been talking about, in the last video, um, introducing the major character in Plato's dialogues, which are philosophical conversations about philosophy or a philosophical topic. We're talking about the character of Socrates and how he's the embodiment of philosophy <coughs> or the search for truth, the movement to this other world of forms. In each dialogue, they're discussing a particular form, whether it's love or philosophy itself or uh, beauty or whatever. Okay. Um, but I want to talk about the character of Socrates and how exactly he practiced philosophy. In particular, what's known as the Socratic method. The Socratic method. And the Socratic method uh, is a method of philosophizing, of engaging with a partner, engaging with an interlocutor, uh, and uh, practicing um, philosophy in a unique way, namely an ironic way. And I want to talk about irony here because the Socratic method makes use of what's called Socratic irony. But so, Socratic method from Socrates, the major character in Plato's dialogue, employs Socratic irony, but I want to talk about what irony is first before we get into Socratic irony and the Socratic method, okay? Irony is very interesting. I, I usually ask the class what irony is and if anyone has an example of irony, um, and usually they think it means something like the unexpected, and that's true to a certain extent. That would be something like dramatic irony, but irony in general uh, I don't know if you remember, there was a song called um, Ironic by Alanis Morissette, maybe in the 90s somehow, and nothing in the song was ironic, but what was ironic was writing a song about irony that wasn't ironic, that would be ironic. And in general, um, irony is this way of existing for philosophers. The closest thing we have to irony, uh, or a form of irony, would be sarcasm. Sarcasm, when you say the opposite of what you mean. Now, irony is generally, that's generally what irony means, saying the opposite of what you mean. So. The distinction between what you say and what you intend, or how something appears and how it really is. And this is really key. Irony highlights that distinction between appearance and reality, which is pretty much an analog to the distinction between the two worlds, the world of appearances and the world of the forms, or the world of real reality. So irony is this, this thing that the philosopher is very comfortable with because it highlights the distinction between appearance and reality. So it's a nice day out today, but if I were to see you on the street and say, what a terrible day, you'd know. Um, ironically, that what I meant was different from what I said. So it asks you to go behind the appearances to the intention, okay? Um, uh, uh, so, okay, so irony is saying the opposite of what you mean. A form of irony is sarcasm, but I would say it's a lower form. There's more playful forms of irony. But Socratic irony, Socratic irony is pretending to be ignorant so as to bring out the ignorance of another person. So pretending to be stupid, like hustling or uh, uh, letting yourself be underestimated, right? So if I go play a basketball game and I'm really good and I come under the appearance of looking like a fool, so I'm taken for granted so that it shows you, it shames you. This was the method that philosophy or uh, 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 Socrates um, employed. He pretended to not know what he was talking about. Well, in a certain sense, whether he pretended or not, this is a, a bit ambiguous, but he feigned ignorance. He'd go, he'd go up to lawyers. He'd go up to lawyers and say, uh, you practice the law, and the law has to do with justice. What is justice? And through a long conversation, he'd find out that the lawyer didn't even know what he was talking about. He didn't know what he thought he knew. And this is the goal of Socratic irony, or the goal of Socratic dialectic, namely to feign ignorance, to highlight that appearance-reality distinction, to pretend you don't know what you're talking about so as to show the other person that they don't know what they th they're talking about, that they do not know what they thought they knew. So the goal of the Socratic method, which makes use of Socratic irony, is to show the other person that they do not know what they thought they knew. He'd go up, he went up to a priest, Euthyphro, in another dialogue, and talked about piety uh, for, a, for a bit and asked him this question, this question, this question. Euthyphro said, well, piety is doing this act or doing that act. And Socrates goes, well, wait a minute. Those are just acts of piety. What's the essence of piety? What's the form of piety? And Euthyphro couldn't answer. Now, you can imagine, uh, as he's going through this with different interlocutors, as they encounter Socrates, they start to catch on what he's doing about, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes into it and realize uh, uh, how he's, you know, letting them come to terms with their own ignorance, but not letting them in on it, right? So you can imagine they become very angry. This is why he was killed, I think. Um, uh, if you start hustling enough people and shaming them and showing them they don't know what they're talking about, uh, they're going to be angry. If you've ever seen the um, comedian Sasha Baron Cohen, he does Borat, Ali G, uh, Bruno, and a host of other characters, and he goes sort of undercover and uh, gets people to uh, 
uh, reveal their all, their racism, their their political prejudices, their their uh, uh, their sexism and things like this. But he pretends to be a racist or a sexist or whatever, and gets people to go along with it. Then they realize afterwards that they were just completely duped, and they've exposed themselves to their own ignorance. Okay. There's also a, a wisdom tradition that makes use of this kind of Socratic irony. Um, if you ever seen Star Wars: The Empire Strikes Back, how does Yoda first appear to Luke Skywalker? He pretends to be a uh, a rube, a country bumpkin who's just uh, you know some guy in a forest doesn't know what he's doing, and he's testing Luke Skywalker. In the in the Bible too, God usually appears under the forms where he's taken for granted, right? Jesus in Luke twenty four on the road to Emmaus uh, after he's crucified uh, at, at the resurrection, he's he's walk he appears to walk with two disciples and says, "Oh, what's going on? What are you guys so upset about?" And they're like, "Don't you realize? Are you the only one in Jerusalem who hasn't heard this Jesus was crucified?" And he goes, "No, please tell me more about that." And then finally they invite him in and he does the Eucharist and they realize it was Jesus and that he was testing them. So this idea of feigning ignorance, uh, pretending to be. Uh, stupid, uh, pretending to be ignorant so that you're underestimated, so that you can reflect back to the person who you're doing this to that they do not know, that they do not know what they thought they knew. The revelation of their own ignorance, that's Socratic irony and that's the Socratic method. And the goal of the Socratic method is a kind of wisdom. The wisdom, namely, in understanding that you don't know. Okay? That's the key idea. Wisdom for Socrates is the revelation that you do not know what you thought you knew. And then once you come to terms with that, through an emotional uh, encounter with your own ignorance, you can begin to philosophize because you've sort of wiped the slate clean, okay?